money stack. So the crazy festival story that I want to tell was just an absolute shit show of a night. It was an event here in San Diego called Day Moves. And I was with a group of friends who I will give everyone fake names for because one person in particular didn't want their name being used in the story. So I'm just gonna give everyone fake names. I was with my friends, Kevin, Ashley, Renee, Carissa, and Alan. And at this time, a bunch of us had had professional reasons to celebrate. We had a couple of promotions, some people took new jobs, and we just felt like we really deserved this. We were feeling good, ended up pre-gaming way too hard. Once we get in, over the next 90 minutes, we basically just started dropping like flies. The first person to go was Kevin. He went to the bathroom and never came back. And then he texted us saying, hey, I'm outside of the venue, and they won't let me back in. And we're like, why are you there? And how are you texting us? Because we have your phone. And he said that he was texting off of his Apple Watch and he just drunkenly wandered out looking for the bathroom. And he explained that to security and they won't let him back in. So he's like, I don't really know what to do. I just like straight up walked out and kind of screwed myself and now I can't get back in. So he ended up calling an Uber on his watch and going home. And this is like barely an hour into the event. Shortly after that, Carissa and Renee were not dressed for what ended up being a really cold night. This event takes place in December and they weren't feeling the music. So they were like, hey, we're just gonna go home. We're not feeling this. We're gonna go meet up with Kevin since he ended up going home alone anyway. We're just gonna bounce. So that left me, Alan, and Ashley. We finally make it to Snake Hips' set. And this is only like halfway through the event. Like we're not even close to the headliners. So we're listening to Snake Hips and literally during a drop, Alan turns to me and he gives me one of these. He's like, like, you wanna get out of here? And I was like, no, I don't wanna get out of here. Like this is the first artist that we're actually seeing after like half the group just left. And there's a literal drop happening right now. I don't know if he thought that it was a changeover or if he was just hearing something else, but it was a really good set. And he was just like, hey, you wanna get out of here? Anyway, uh, we finished that set. And then me and Ashley were like, let's just go home because like it's me and you and we're doing okay. Then there's Alan who like, I don't even know where he is mentally. Half the group is gone. Let's just go meet up with everybody because at that point it had been really stressful. For me and Ashley, like we're just trying to corral people. People are walking out and me and Ashley were like, what the hell, what a night. Let's just go up, take some shots. The entrance to my house is on the second floor because the first floor is a garage. So get out of the Uber, start walking uh, to the stairs to get to the front door. And at the very bottom, Ashley trips and she flies forward and hits her face on a curb. And I like turn around and I'm like, I just see her face planted, not moving. I'm like, dude, are you okay? What happened? Like, keep in mind, like, I'm, I'm like tired, drunk, and just like stressed. And I, I turn around, she's just like face planted. And I pick her up and she's like bleeding from the mouth. Turns out she uh, hit a tooth. She's like missing a front tooth, like one of the front top four ones. I carry her upstairs and we walk in. Kevin is passed out on the couch. Carissa and Renee are just eating dino nuggets. And I walk in with Ashley like slung over my arm and she's like bleeding from the mouth. And I'm like, hey guys, can you guys like make room? We like set her down, we call her boyfriend and we're like, hey, can you come get her? She's okay, but you should just come over. Later that night, I did end up finding the tooth uh, in my yard. But yeah, that was that was pretty much it. That was, that was a roller coaster just reliving. That's how you know you're going too hard. If someone's losing a tooth, that's when you know you gotta, you gotta take it down a notch. So in 2016, I attended the Desert Trip, which is a music festival that some people called Old Cella online, just because it was thrown by the same people who throw Coachella. It was thrown in the exact same location as Coachella, just it was October, and it only had one stage with huge headlining classic artists, Bob Dylan, the Rolling Stones. So I went with my dad. I assumed it was gonna be a much more mature crowd. Little did I know that during one of these sets, I can't remember who we were watching at the time, I started feeling the back of my leg getting really wet. I was in the middle of a crowd, so I figured, hey, you know what, like, I think someone is spilling their drink on my leg. Let me just turn around and let them know that they're spilling their drink on my leg. But when I turned around, I was completely surprised to find out the old man standing behind me had decided to pee on my leg. I got a full view of him literally whipping it out like he had whipped it out and was peeing directly on my leg. 
It was disgusting. I was in complete shock. By this time, like, I mean, I moved as soon as I realized what was happening. But it was going, like, into my boots. I remember it was so gross. I was like, hey, like, what the hell? And the guy kept peeing. I think he was really drunk. But he was, like, this old man. And my dad got really angry at the guy, obviously. Um, and, yeah, it was disgusting. My campsite was so, so far from the stage. And I didn't want to have to leave during the middle of the set that we were watching. So I literally stood there all night with pee in my boots. You know, what you gonna do? Craziest festival story was when I went to Lightning in a Bottle 2018 and my boyfriend and his friends decided to make this really cool and intricate totem. Um, I'll make sure to put the clip right here for you guys to check it out. They're all engineers. They built this totem that changes color. You can control like the pattern of the colors, the speed of the colors. It was just really, really cool looking, like eight feet tall. So we go to Lightning in a Bottle. The last day we're on our way to a closey set and this guy in this big fur coat, I mean, he just looks really cool, really like bougie. He comes up to, um, my boyfriend Robbie and he's like how much do you want for that toto? My girlfriend really loves it and she wants to buy it. And he goes, oh, it's not for sale, sorry. And the guy's like, no, I have cash. Like, how much do you want for it? And Robbie's like, I doubt you have enough cash that I'd be asking for. I don't know, like $300? And the guy's like, okay. So his girlfriend comes up. Him and his girlfriend combine their money and they have $300 cash. Of course, it wasn't just Robbie who built the totem. So him and the boys kind of discussed it and wanted to see if they were willing to sell it. And at the end of the day, they they ended up keeping the totem just because it was so sentimental and they'd put so much work into it. Um, but it was just so funny that this random guy, mind you, he's an engineer himself, was willing to just drop so much money on a totem that he could have built himself. And it was just so immediate and so quick. It was a good time and it was really funny to watch, but um, we actually still have that totem to this day. Robbie has it in his closet and I don't know, maybe we'll maybe we'll take it to a to a festival next time. Definitely a good story to tell though.